Hey guys, welcome to another essential tutorial. So today I'm going to be using 3ds Max and Tyflow in order to create these abstract renderings of fiber optic cables. Now there's a few ways to do something like this effect, um, but today I'm going to be using VecMap tools in order to have a bit more control over those forces. So what it does is it allows you to input an object, you paint RGB values onto it, and then using those RGB values, it converts it to vector map forces. So it just kind of gives you some cool control over the look of your simulation. So let's create a plane here and let's create a UV map on it. And I'm going to go ahead and run that VecMap tool script. Then we're going to pick our source geometry and simply give it a resolution. Now, as I hit paint here, you're going to see that the dots are relatively small. So let's reset that. And using control shift, we can increase the size of our brush. We can also use, use alt in order to remove some of that RGB value. Um, so that's pretty much all you have to do to get painting. So let's paint on these counter centric circles. Just kind of adding a bit more detail as I'm getting into the center. Once you're happy, just go save as, and let's save it as an image. I'm going to save it as test10.jpg. Now let's go ahead and add in our first tie flow simulation. I'm going to open the editor and let's create a birth operator. I'm going to set the end value off and set the amount of particles to 1200 so that all those particles are occurring on frame zero. And then I'm going to create a position object so that we can position those particles onto that plane object. Then I'm going to create the display mode as geometry and set the value to white so that we can see it a bit easier in our viewport. Now nothing's happening yet, um, so let's create a script and this is going to be where our forces start to occur. So let's open the script editor and don't worry, we're not going to be scripting today. But when you purchase VecMap tools, it comes with a tie flow script that we're going to be loading in here. So let's go back and load tie flow script.tfs. It's going to bring in this code. Let's go file evaluate. And again, once I scrub, nothing's happening. And that's because we have to input the plane into the script accessible objects. Then we also have to input a, the bitmap into the script accessible images. So let's go and load in a bitmap here. Let's load in that test 10 and make sure to do override 1.0. Otherwise the gray values won't be correct and you're gonna have some weird forces occurring. So as I scrub through, now you can see that this is starting to affect our particles. And where those RGB values are on our image, it's starting to move them in different directions. So if I create a force value uh, in the Z direction of 0.4, for instance, it's going to start to push those particles up as these uh, particles are kind of uh, being affected in a vortex direction. Let's add a spline paths set to trajectory. And I'm going to just enable them in viewport so that we can see uh, what the thickness of these splines are. In which case, I'm going to set them to like 0.5 or something like that. So that looks pretty cool, um, but let's add in a mesh operator so we can render this out in V-Ray. And I'm also gonna use a surface test because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a cylinder for instance, and I'm gonna have these particles be triggered based on their proximity to the cylinder. So let's disable this tie flow sim. I'm gonna zoom over to frame 100, and then I'm gonna animate the radius of this increasing over time. I'm going to make it not renderable and display as box just so we can still see our simulation uh, through this cylinder. So now if I pick in that cylinder into the surface test operator and I move some of these other operators over, uh, you're going to see what effect happens. Basically what I'm doing is I want to have it so that when particles enter within a certain proximity to the cylinder, then all of a sudden they're going to have a force moving up in the Z direction. They're going to start to get trajectory splines and um, they're not going to be creating all this chaos until they're close to that uh, trigger object. So as you can see, once uh, we have it set up like this, that it's gonna kind of create this pyramid effect or this kind of mountain growing out of the surface. And that looks pretty good. Um, so I'm just gonna increase the thickness on these splines just a little bit more. And once you kind of have a preliminary look here, uh, you can increase the amount of birth particles and that's just gonna increase the density of these splines. You could, of course, change the plane to any kind of object, like a sphere or box or, or any kind of custom geometry. Um, and you can also play around with painting different RGB values, um, lots of variables to give you different looks. So let's go ahead and set up a quick V-Ray uh, setup here. I'm going to create a couple lights, add them into our scene. I'm not going to spend too long on this as this isn't a lighting tutorial, but just for now, let's just kind of create something in our scene so that we can see how this looks. I'm going to change the directional value just so that um, it has a bit more of a cool look here. You can see by default, none of those RGB values are on our spline objects. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a mapping operator. And then I'm going to have it map based on this input plane geometry. 
Again, if I render, nothing's going to be happening. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that RGB uh, 10, test 10 JPEG to our tie flow and spline objects. And now you can see when I render, now it has that, uh, that texture on there. Okay, so let's change this light here to a dome light. And I'm just going to tweak it so that these lights are invisible in our viewports or sorry, in the rendering. And then I'm going to just change the values here down a little bit. And once I open this up and change the forces to more extreme, I just want to kind of change the uh, amount of peak that's occurring on these mountains, just as I think that gives it a bit of a better look. Okay, so we have those RGB values occurring. The forces look good to me. Let's go ahead and mesh this out using time mesher so that we can easily duplicate this within our scene. Uh, I'm going to change the mode to input geometry. And before I extract the mesh, I want to make sure to apply this original texture to the tie mesher object. I'm then going to extract that mesh. So it breaks everything down in our tie flow sim to one still frame of all that geometry with the correct UVs. So if I apply this here, you're still going to see nothing occurs uh, until I add a UV map. Uh, and there you go. So now this is kind of a baked out version of our tie flow simulation. And the reason I'm doing this is that it allows us to quickly uh, duplicate this within our object and arrange a scene like the reference I showed in the thumbnail. So just duplicating this out and kind of repositioning these in our scene, um, you can kind of start to focus on the composition and tweak the lighting how you want. You could of course then go ahead and start to render this out in V-Ray. Um, but for me, I'm going to select all these time mesher objects and I'm going to export them as a USD object. And the reason why is because I'm going to show you how we can set this up for a render in NVIDIA Omniverse Create. So let's leave all the settings the same. I'm going to leave it to a current frame only. You could, of course, render out the entire sequence if you wanted to have an animated USD sequence uh, for doing out uh, something not a still frame. Uh, process is very similar, but for the case of brevity, let's just show one still rendering. So I'm going to set up some basic lights. Now, using Omniverse Create, you use USD, right? So because we exported a USD, we can open that directly within Omniverse, start to light it, and we can start to add materials. So I'm going to add an Omniverse Omni PBR. I'm going to load in the diffuse texture of that test 10 JPEG. And then I'm going to paste it onto all our objects so that we start to see all those diffuse colors occurring in our scene. I'm going to add in a dome light. And just using the environment lights, I can just pick in some preset here, something like light box, just so we can see everything kind of light up a bit more evenly. Uh, I'm then going to change the camera to create from view. And I'm going to play around with the depth of field settings here. Just tweaking the f-stop and the focus distance, we can start to focus the middle part of this frame into view. Then just by playing around with the focal length, find a shot we're happy with. That looks pretty good to me. So let's change it to RTX Interactive Path Tracing. And I'm just gonna add some post-processing effects like chromatic aberration, uh, motion blur, excuse me, blur, and uh, bloom. I'm also going to go ahead and add some fog and just kind of tweak things until I'm happy with it. This isn't going to be really an NVIDIA Onverse Create tutorial, but just kind of an overview of how you can set up uh, tutorials or how you can set up rendering effects like this. So I can go ahead and tweak the position of our light here. And just kind of what's nice about this is everything interactively updates in your viewport. So you can kind of get a really good sense of what your final frame is going to look like. And once you are happy with it, go to Window, Rendering, Movie Capture. And we're just going to set up some settings here in order to be able to render this out. So let's go ahead and set this up to be 1920 by 1080. I'm going to set it to Interactive RTX Path Tracing. Uh, I'm going to set our Path Trace samples to 128. And our subframes per frame to something like 8. And I'm going to set an output path and give it a name. In this case, I'm going to call it Onverse underscore Render and Capture Current Frame. That's going to go ahead and give us a rendered frame of our project. So there's lots of ways you can apply this to uh, create all these other type of renderings. This is using the exact same tie flow setup. Um, this is just using different materials and lighting in order to create these different abstract effects. Anyway, I hope this helped you guys out today. Um, I just used it to create still renderings, but you could, of course, use this to render out different animations. And yeah, hope this helps you out, and I will see you next time.